So, with the evaluation criteria in place, let's take a look at what I need to do from the perspective of a specific information system security project. At the very least, I need to have some basic requirements to ensure the security of my system, whether it's software, hardware or personnel, I need to have some basic requirements. Here we talk about the basic concept of security models, which are the basic requirements that we must have for the security of new systems, such as processors. Let's start with the processor. As we all know, the processor is the CPU, which is responsible for encoding, decoding, executing and storing. We learned about this in our college courses or when studying the basic principles of computers. But when it comes to processors today, they are more about multitasking and multithreading. Here we need to understand the development of science and technology. In the past, it was single user and single threaded and there was no such problem. But when it comes to multi-user and multi-threading, the problem becomes more serious. What is multitasking? It's when multiple programs are processed at the same time. What is multi-threading? It could be a single program, but it is processing several different tasks at the same time, like when I open several files in PPT. Whether it's different programs or the same program, there is a problem when I process different data or files. For example, program A. Can I read the data processed by program B? Strictly speaking, I can't. If program A can directly see the processing of program B, then obviously the confidentiality of B is gone. Isn't that a data leak? So for this kind of multi-system and multi-threading processing, we need to find a way to isolate the data. You need to have a way to isolate and block this data. Just like program A is only in the processing space of program A and program B is in the processing space of program B and they can't see each other. So how does the computer implement this? Here we use a technique called time division multiplexing. We divide a period of time into smaller segments or intervals. From the perspective of one second or from a macro perspective, it seems that multiple programs are processing at the same time. But if you look at it from a differential perspective, my CPU is only processing one process on one core at a time. First in, first out. After I finish processing, I can process the next process. In this way, different programs can run at the same time, but they are isolated from each other. This is time division multiplexing technology. But here we need an operating system. It needs to have this scheduling capability. And also you need the underlying CPU. Your CPU hardware needs to support this scheduling and capability. That is when your CPU is processing, you need to have it needs to have an isolation capability, which was previously exposed by Intel. Everyone understands that virtualization is widely used today. Virtualization means that on the same physical device, I may have multiple hosts at the same time. That is, I have multiple operating systems running at the same time. The vulnerability that Intel exposed at the time was that there was a full line promotion vulnerability on the 64 bit operating system, which is equivalent to what I just said. That is a certain program or a certain host that is the virtual system. It can read the data in another host or system without control, which is very insecure. Your virtualization is like me. For example, I, the a virtual environment is a windows. Then my B virtual environment is a Linux. Then I can seamlessly or without any hindrance access the files of Linux from Windows. Then this security is actually very poor. This vulnerability at the time, it should be called the meltdown vulnerability. You can look up the book. I will introduce this in detail. This vulnerability caused Intel's stock price to fall. Why? Because if it is a hardware vulnerability, if you have a hardware vulnerability, then my operating system and my security functions and security software are powerless. Because your data is leaking from the bottom layer, then you can only wait for Intel to find a solution, either to update the hardware version or to I have to go through this. System scheduling may have to be done through software by patching this bug to resolve this hardware vulnerability. So you need to understand this. If it is a hardware vulnerability, then the system and security software will be powerless because your bottom layer is equivalent to 
the road has a problem this thing becomes very difficult you need to understand this a very famous security incident after talking about the cpu let's look at the memory which is the storage the storage is divided into random access memory and routing memory the so called random access memory is the memory we talk about which is conscious memory isn't it gone when the power is cut off rom is what we call routing memory which is usually a generation of manufacturers such as the bios in the cmos on our motherboard which is routing memory the security of this storage is actually similar to that of the cpu you need to be able to achieve process isolation that is during the simultaneous running process of my program a and program b they can't see each other so how is memory isolation done it has three technologies the first is paging for example this program is a 100 mb file that is being processed then i process this 100 mb file all at once what do i need to do i need to do this paging i need to divide this memory into many basic units and levels based on 4k as a basic unit in this way i have the concept of partitioning which is equivalent to every 4k of my 100 or mb is a memory page i need to talk about my head and tail from the perspective of this battle it's partitioning how big a piece of memory can i divide this second part the third part then how do i ensure that other programs different programs are assigned different memory address segments and my program a cannot read the memory of program b that is i need to lock the memory boundary of this program what is this called protection key this is through the scheduling of the operating system just like after we allocate space for memory what do we do just seal this piece of memory encapsulating this is the protection key technology so memory protection through partitioning protects different pages with this protection key sealing in this way different programs are assigned different memory addresses and no one can see anyone of course memory allocation is still random if my program a occupies the first 100 mb then my program b follows the queue and occupies 101 to 200 mb it's easy to guess so when i allocate memory what should it be it should be unordered he should not be able to guess your address bit so when it comes to this everyone will understand here you need the cooperation of software and hardware a memory needs to have this support possibility another thing is that your operating system must have a security control ability that is the management ability of cpu and memory for example the early windows 98 it does not have this security those who have used windows 98 know that it often blue screens there is also one for example i used to play a game called the legend of sword and fairy on windows 98 It's an RPG game you can think of it as a stand alone version of an online game just stand alone it doesn't need the internet it's a stand alone version it's called RPG it's a role playing game so there is a li xiao yao inside i don't remember it very clearly there is a protagonist who is leveling up by fighting monsters or something if you fight monsters it's very hard because you have to increase your experience value including having gold coins and there are many things like herbs and sky breaking hammers in his props it's very hard to fight so i hope to pass the level as soon as possible do i have a way to change these parameters change the parameters in the game in this way when i fight the final boss isn't it simple how did you do it at that time there is a tool called jinshan ranger which is produced by jinshan company This Jinshan Ranger is obviously program B the legend of sword and fairy is program A the ranger can do what he has what we call a gold finger commonly known as what is a gold finger it's the memory address of a certain parameter in your game i can scan out this memory address through jinshan ranger that is i can find out where this parameter is executing in my memory when i execute this game what do i find this memory address for i modify it I can directly modify this memory address in Jinshan Ranger. In this way, I don't have that level in itself. For example, I only have nine herbs. Then I directly modify the memory address. I change it to ninety nine. Then what about my blood return, including what experience value, can be infinitely improved. Everyone, from the perspective of game experience, of course, it's good, simple, quick, and satisfying. 
But if you look at it from a security perspective, Jinshan Ranger is actually a hacker software. He directly modified the memory address of another program. The relevant parameters in the memory address. So there are often problems. So there are often problems if you modify too much, it exceeds the address of program A, the legend of Sword and Fairy. Then you what? Blue screen like Windows 98, he himself, he can't accept this thing. He doesn't blue screen. If you are like a server, then my certain program processing, I exceed my own memory address space. It may cause buffer overflow. In the future, we will talk about it. Buffer overflow is that the parameter exceeds the allocated space. It may jump into the system space. Just write this system space is exactly my command is working in the memory environment. Then you just promoted it. What have we got then? We have obtained it on technology that has not undergone security audits and regulations. This is the administrator's permission. That's our problem. So speaking of this, we will find that the security of Windows is gradually improving. Many operating systems before 2000 did not have security. Now we have Windows 10, Windows 11. The chances of us seeing a blue screen are much less. So everyone needs to understand this. In addition, after we have talked about CPU memory, let's look at the security of firmware. The firmware itself uses ROM, such as the routers we talk about, including these small home switches. It also has its own small operating system. Generally, these firmwares are embedded in the hardware, like the CMOS on the motherboard. So what's the problem? Your manufacturer needs to be strong. The firmware execution code developed by the manufacturer must be safe and controllable. Another thing is whether the manufacturer's patches can be regularly or timely updated. So this is the requirement for firmware. Of course, there are also some IO devices that is input and output devices. Everyone just needs to understand this. It's not important such as printers, keyboards. They also have some security requirements. They just mentioned that the whole thing, whether it's CPU memory, including this hardware device, including the input and output devices we mentioned, are they all controlled by the operating system? Unified security scheduling because its scheduling needs to be unified. So this operating system is unified security scheduling. How does it achieve unity? Here is a system kernel. What is the system kernel? It is the most core components in the operating system, the most core code in these code components, there should be. What is a security kernel? It is the core code responsible for security, not secure memory. It should be a secure kernel. Let's take a look. We just said, for example, allocated memory, which program is allocated to which memory, including how to randomly allocate and another is task switching my CPU and memory scheduling. What else? For example, my A really needs to read this B's processing result. I can ignore the middle process, but the processing result of your B data, I A really need to call. You can it? Yes. What does it need? It needs our so-called kernel, the control of the security kernel. It requires the system's security kernel to carry out unified scheduling and control. You can't let A directly read B. Where does your A program have B programs permission? I need my operating system to schedule security. So these are all things that the system kernel needs to do, including the security of data storage. It's very clear just now when we were talking about Windows 98, it didn't have security capabilities because Windows 98 itself works on files to partition. It doesn't have local permissions. It doesn't have a detailed definition. So these are all part of the work that needs to be done in the process of security development. We also mentioned the system kernel just now, such as generating a process or an instance, which plays a role in isolation. Another one is to allocate memory and CPU to independent programs. It has a role in resource allocation and at the same time, it has a role in isolation. So speaking of this, it is for the security requirements of our technology or equipment. Is there a security framework and requirements for management? This is the enterprise's security architecture. The security architecture of the enterprise is to provide corresponding components for the information infrastructure of the enterprise. From a management perspective, what components should you have and their priority relationship? In fact, 
it is equivalent to putting superior resources on a framework of superior assets because there are many risks in my enterprise including many assets i can't say that i can grab everything with my eyebrows and beard my financial strength and my this person's energy and time can't cover it so these architectures are to protect the most critical assets everyone draws a line it can reduce the risk to a level acceptable to the business this is the role and value of the security architecture in fact there is no security architecture in the world at the beginning where is the security architecture or these leading enterprises like ibm like mckinsey including accenture they touch these models in the industry because they are leading enterprises like this management consulting company like the big 4 because they see more enterprises he has audited and reported more companies and he can sort out models from these companies which are advanced including the world's top 500 their practices and those for security so these models are actually what we call architecture what is a model standard and model it is a norm or standard that can provide best security practices what is the best practice that is you can do it according to this pattern or standard it's not mandatory right it can bring benefits if you do it but it's not necessarily a problem if you don't do it but usually doing so may have the highest cost effectiveness the least cost but the best effect these security practices or models have become a kind of reusable a security service a specific module or a framework design in this way can achieve higher cost effectiveness reduce costs and increase its value let's take a look at what security models there might be first of all no matter which security model everyone first draw it this boundary is very important we also call it what it's also called zoning boundary no matter what type of enterprise you are or what industry you are in and no matter what the scale of these enterprises is first of all you need to divide this enterprise's new system into this kind of boundary at least there is a difference between inside and outside my internet must be different from my company's internet what else at least my area must be different my internal and external networks including my server area must be different in addition the accounts are different your different accounts your general manager and machine staff when accessing the same server the data you see is different it's a full line of differences this series of differences in fact are boundary control that is to say we say that from a high density level to a low density level the process of data flow i need to control what else does it include it includes access control authorization including passwords we talk about password policies including the degree of passwords these all belong to general security services we just mentioned security the first thing everyone draw a line is regional isolation what is regional isolation ensure that a higher security areas ability to access or modify the information system will not leak information to the low security area that is different levels of areas they are relatively independent and isolated it's not worth mentioning to outsiders it's invisible to others this is the first thing to do in the security framework so speaking of this place we mainly talk about what these security models are 